Chemical properties are due only to chemical composition. Physical properties are due to chemical composition and the state of matter. Intermolecular forces, which I'll abbreviate as IMFs, are forces between molecules. Intermolecular forces largely determine the physical properties of molecular liquids and solids. And when we say molecular, of course, we're talking about compounds that are covalently bonded, which usually contain only nonmetals. For a given substance, let's say water, the strengths of the IMFs are going to be different for the gaseous state of the substance compared to the liquid state compared to the solid state. Let's see if we can figure this out. Gases have lots of kinetic energy. Their particles are moving very, very fast. Solid particles are only vibrating in place, so they don't have as much kinetic energy, and the particles in the liquid state of matter have a kinetic energy somewhat in the middle. Gases, of course, are far apart from each other. Particles of solids are very close together, and in liquids, they are also very close, pretty much the same distance apart as in solids. In which of these states of matter will the forces of attraction, the intermolecular forces, be the strongest? That's going to be the solids because the particles aren't moving very quickly and they're relatively close together. And as we know, anytime electrostatic forces are involved, close together means a stronger interaction. I'm going to put a less than sign right there and a less than sign right there. Solids tend to have the strongest intermolecular forces and gases the weakest for a given substance. And kinetic energy over here on the left side of the screen depends of course on the temperature of the matter and how close together is the proximity of those particles. For gases in particular how much pressure they're under to maybe force those gaseous particles closer together than they otherwise would be. Intermolecular forces are much weaker than ionic or covalent bonds. No more than 15% is strong. When we vaporize water, we overcome the intermolecular forces between water molecules. Here we've got a couple of water molecules, and an intermolecular force exists between one water molecule and another. We will give this intermolecular force a name in a future lesson, but for now, just suffice it to say that there's an intermolecular force between those water molecules. When we boil water, when we vaporize it, we overcome that intermolecular force that I've shown right there with the dashed line, but we don't affect, of course, the covalent bonds that are holding the molecule together. In other words, boiling or freezing doesn't affect those bonds that I've shown with solid lines. Boiling point and freezing or melting point, of course, then depend on IMFs. The stronger the IMFs, you can imagine if you look at this picture again on the right side of the screen, if this intermolecular force between these two particles is very strong, then the boiling point is going to have to be much higher. So strong IMFs lead to high boiling points and high melting or freezing points. If the intermolecular forces are very weak, the boiling point can be very low, and so can the melting and freezing points.